When you think of a small dedicated combat ship, you might think of a viper or an eagle. Something that whips along at phenomenal speeds, pecking at the shields of larger targets with some modest small armament. This is not that ship. No. Core Dynamics decided to do things a bit differently. And aside from the terrible noise it makes, they did it right. This is the Vulture. A dedicated small fighter craft with two large hardpoints mounted on its back. It is, in short, like bringing a gun to a game of rock, paper, scissors. It is a fantastic amount of overkill. And I love it. But let's start with the basics. The Vulture is definitively a combat ship, specifically a heavy combat ship. And that means it's a bit slower than the other kids on the playground. But that's because it's the schoolyard bully. What it loses in speed, it makes up for in brute strength. And when it does catch you, you're not going to be able to dodge the hits. The Vulture is staggeringly maneuverable, meaning that even if you're a middling combat pilot like me, you're not really going to have a hard time parking the Vulture right on the ass of whatever you want to shoot at. And even if you end up in a jousting match with another ship, you're going to outturn everything else on the field outside an Eagle. So you'll have more time laying down fire before anyone else can even line up a shot. And because you have two large hard points, you're not going to need a lot of time to take down anything. In fact, the biggest problem you're going to have on the battlefield isn't going to be the person you're shooting at. It's going to be the Vulture itself. The power plant on the Vulture just can't quite seem to keep up with the rest of the ship. You can either fly full tilt and have shields, or you can lay into the guns. But you can't seem to do both. This ship almost flat out requires you to engineer it if only a little bit. And this brings up an interesting thought. I don't think they ever finished designing the ship. It's almost as if Core Dynamics had completely missed the point of a small fighter. Like they legitimately did not understand why other companies weren't putting more powerful guns on their fast strike craft. And so, for the dedicated Federation manufacturer, the solution to the problem of people shooting at you was to just use more gun. So as a result, you have a ship that can't adequately support its own weight, unless you modify it. Even just overcharging the power plant will allow you to really open up what the Vulture is capable of. Suddenly you have a lot more options. You don't have to use low powered weapons or shields. You don't have to juggle pips to catch up with your target before laying in with the guns. And frankly, this ship's worst problem turns out to be its absolute best feature. Give the Vulture just a little bit of love, and it'll give you so much back in return. In the words of Vindicator Jones, this is a ship that wants you to win. I'm certainly not the best combat pilot out there by any means, but flying this thing makes me feel like a goddamn god of war. I think this might be the only ship where I genuinely feel like a bounty hunter when I fly it. I'll have to get myself some wraparound sunglasses and a leather jacket without the sleeves. The main man always gets his target. And when you could afford it, upgrading the armor plating, tuning the engines, and overcharging your weapons will turn the Vulture into an object of sublime devastation. It easily becomes one of the best combat ships in the galaxy. The conventional build for the Vulture is overcharged pulse lasers or plasma accelerators, but I prefer multi-cannons with incendiary rounds either overcharged or with an auto-feeder. Yes, you're reliant on ammunition, but I don't have to worry about mitigating any overheating. And because the Vulture can keep a bead on most any ship, it doesn't take much to tear through the shields or armor of anything I'm firing at anyway. But really, there's no wrong answer here. Ultimately, you're going to be firing two Class 3 hardpoints at your target, and engineering is flexible enough to accommodate your particular preferred poison. Figure out what works for you, and the Vulture will be more than accommodating. And not just with your weapons. This ship also has a delightfully varied selection of ship kit parts in case you want to alter its unique styling. And to be honest, that is my biggest problem with this ship. Why have they called it the Vulture? I appreciate that it's not another ship named after a snake, but it doesn't really have wings. And more to the point, it has mandibles. 
I can see how you wouldn't want to call it the bullet ant, but it's very clearly an insect. Why not the stinger or the scarab? I get that this is a minor point to be hung up on, but once you've created a ship that doesn't have any right to be as good as it is, you can't give it a stupid name. Seriously, what has happened in the future that all these companies are completely incapable of copyrighted every snake name I could think of so nobody else would be able to use them? Call up a marketing company and get them to make a short list. And you could fundamentally call it the mantis shrimp for all the difference it makes. The vulture. Jesus. Doesn't even look like a vulture. Should you buy this ship? Yes, clearly. And especially if you're not a dedicated combat pilot. This ship will show you how much fun combat can be. And more importantly, it'll teach you to be better at it. Because the Vulture is a custom hot rod made for blowing stuff up. The product of short-sighted engineers who built a ship that shouldn't work. But does anyway. It's a ship made for hunting down criminals and making money off their corpses. Maybe it is a vulture after all. Ship loadouts, bloopers, and music tracks I've used here are all available over on the Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next week.